Hello hockey fans and welcome back to another video. Several months ago, I released a pair of uploads looking at some of the worst drafts in NHL history. Whether it was the disappointing class of 2012 or the abysmal group from 1999, we explored just how awfully these drafts panned out in the many years that followed. Now instead of focusing on the worst of the worst, let's flip the script and look at some of the best drafts instead. And what better place to start than the 2003 NHL Entry Draft? After all, thanks to the plethora of prospects who lived up to their hype and the myriad of players who surpassed expectations, the 2003 draft is not only regarded as the best of its generation, it's one of the greatest drafts in the history of the National Hockey League. So in today's video, join me as we explore why the 2003 NHL Entry Draft was an overwhelming success. Now in order to highlight just how incredible this draft was, let's take a look at all of the first round picks that clearly panned out in the many years after their selection. And to do that, let's work our way from the latest selection of the round all the way to the very top of the draft order. Because oh boy were there a lot of great picks. First up, we have the 29th overall pick by the Ottawa Senators, Patrick Eves. A productive middle six forward for much of his career, Eves spent parts of 14 seasons in the NHL, where he scored 132 goals and 242 points in 633 games during that span. Alongside his decent career statistics, Eves was also a finalist for the 2019 Bill Masterton Trophy for perseverance and sportsmanship due to him returning to the league following a lengthy battle with both illnesses and injuries too. His career wasn't as long as some of the other players that we're going to look at in this video, but spending almost a decade and a half in the best league in the world sounds like a pretty successful tenure if you ask me. Next up we have the 28th pick by the Mighty Ducks of Anaheim, Corey Perry. One of the most productive players of his generation, Perry has spent the last 18 seasons in the NHL, he continues to suit up in the show to this very day, and he has currently played 1,195 NHL games at the time of this recording, where he has registered 407 goals and 863 points for his efforts. If that's not impressive enough though, Perry has also earned a Hart Trophy, a Rocket Richard Trophy, a Stanley Cup, and he is also a member of the Triple Gold Club too, so I think he's done pretty well for himself. He's also reached three consecutive Stanley Cup finals with three different teams over the last three years, but he has found himself on the losing side every single time. Even the most accomplished players suffer their fair share of setbacks, you know. Moving on to the 26th pick by the Los Angeles Kings, Brian Boyle. A physical bottom six centre who thrived on the penalty kill, Boyle spent parts of 14 seasons in the NHL, where he potted 141 goals and 252 points in 871 games in the process. Alongside his career numbers, Boyle also earned the 2018 Bill Masterton Trophy after he returned to the league following a battle with cancer, where he went on to score 10 goals in his first 25 games that year. He wasn't the most productive player of his draft class, but Boyle knew his role and played it very, very well. Now we have the 24th pick by the Philadelphia Flyers, Mike Richards. A productive center and a former captain in the league, Richards played 11 seasons in the NHL, where he potted 181 goals and 487 points in 749 games. Not only that, Richards played a significant role in helping the Los Angeles Kings win their first two championships in franchise history, as he lifted both the 2012 and the 2014 Stanley Cup as a member of the team. Sure, his exit from the Kings was mired in controversy, and his departure from the league saw little fanfare, but Richards produced a pretty successful career in the show, issues or not. Next we have the 23rd pick by the Vancouver Canucks, Ryan Kessler. One of the best second line centers of his era, Kessler suited up in 1001 NHL games over parts of 18 seasons in the show, where he potted 258 goals and 573 points during that span. If his career numbers weren't impressive enough though, Kessler was also known for his defensive attributes too, as he earned the 2011 Selkie Trophy as the league's best defensive forward, and he was named a finalist for the award on four other occasions, so he clearly knew how to play in his own zone, you know? Though he would struggle with injuries during his later seasons, and he would be forced to retire prematurely as a result, Kessler certainly left his mark on the league. 
onto the 21st overall pick by the Boston Bruins, Mark Stewart. A defensive defenseman and reliable role player, Mark Stewart played 673 games during his 12-year NHL career, scoring 26 goals and 93 points for his efforts. While Stewart didn't get his hands on any silverware as a pro, and his career was far more modest than many of the other players in this video, he did earn plenty of awards at the college level, and he is currently serving as an assistant coach of the Edmonton Oilers, so he is clearly putting his wealth of experience to very good use. Now we have the 20th pick by the Minnesota Wild, Brent Burns. One of the best offensive defensemen of his era, Brent Burns has spent the last two decades carving out an impressive career in the NHL, as he has scored 230 goals and 790 points in 1,271 games at the time of this recording. If his career statistics weren't incredible enough though, Burns has also earned his fair share of awards during this span, as the six-time All-Star has won an NHL Foundation Award, a Norris Trophy, has been a finalist for the Norris on three other occasions, and he has led all defensemen in scoring three times too. Sounds like a successful career if you ask me. Next is the 19th overall pick by the Mighty Ducks of Anaheim, Ryan Getzlaff. One of the best players in Ducks franchise history and a longtime captain of the team, Ryan Getzlaff played 17 seasons in the show, where he potted 282 goals and 1,019 points in 1,157 NHL games for his efforts. Not only that, Getzlaff would also help Anaheim lift their first Stanley Cup championship in 2007, he would be named to the NHL All-Star Game three times, and he would be a finalist for the Hart Memorial Trophy during the 13-14 season too. So not only did Anaheim draft Corey Perry, but they got Getzlaff too? Now that's how you make the most of your draft picks, folks. Moving on to the 18th pick by the Washington Capitals, Eric Fair. A productive middle six winger throughout his NHL career, Eric Fair spent parts of 14 seasons in the show, where he scored 113 goals and 221 points in 652 games. Though Fair wouldn't earn any individual awards during this span, he would get his name written on some of the greatest trophies in the sport, as he lifted both the Calder Cup and the Stanley Cup over the course of his pro career, something even the most successful players in this video were unable to do. Not bad, Fair. Not bad at all. Now we have the 17th pick by the New Jersey Devils, Zach Parise. A high-scoring forward throughout his pro career, Zach Parise has spent the last 18 seasons in the NHL, where he has potted 413 goals and 854 points in 1,163 games at the time of this recording. Despite his lack of silverware in the show, Parise has worn a letter on his jersey in 12 of his 18 seasons, he was named a finalist for the Lady Bing during the 08-09 season, and he is still active in the league to this very day, so he certainly could have done a lot worse for himself all things considered. Next up is the 16th pick by the San Jose Sharks, Steve Bernier. A reliable depth forward for many seasons, Steve Bernier suited up in 637 NHL games over parts of 12 years, scoring 105 goals and 230 points for his efforts. Now while Bernier's play wouldn't come close to winning any awards, the former forward is now serving as the Director of Player Development for the QMJHL's Moncton Wildcats, so his wealth of experience in the show is still being put to pretty good use. Onto the 14th pick by the Chicago Blackhawks, Brent Seabrook. One of the most reliable defensemen of his generation, Brent Seabrook played parts of 18 seasons in the NHL, where he notched 103 goals and 464 points in 1,114 games. If all of that wasn't impressive enough though, Seabrook also went to the All-Star Game in 2015, he lifted three Stanley Cups over a six-year span, and he is one of the greatest players in Blackhawks franchise history. His career may have ended prematurely due to injuries, and he is still earning his yearly salary while on the Tampa Bay Lightning's LTIR list, but you can't deny that Brent Seabrook produced quite the successful career. Next is the 13th overall pick by the LA Kings, Dustin Brown. A productive top six forward and a longtime captain in the league, Dustin Brown played 18 seasons in the show, where he potted 325 goals and 712 points in 1,296 NHL games. 
Alongside his impressive numbers, Brown would also earn his fair share of accolades too, as he received an NHL Foundation Player Award, the Marc Messier Leadership Award, and he captained Los Angeles to their first Stanley Cup championships in 2012 and 2014. Having your name written on the cup once is difficult enough, but leading your team in scoring during the playoffs and being the first player to lift the trophy on multiple occasions is a pretty impressive feat if you ask me. Now we have the 11th pick by the Philadelphia Flyers, Jeff Carter. Another productive player throughout his career, Jeff Carter has spent the last 18 seasons in the NHL, where he has scored 421 goals and 818 points in 1,187 games at the time of this recording. Not only that, Carter has also been named a two-time All-Star, he has led the league in game-winning goals on two separate occasions, and he lifted a pair of Stanley Cups with the LA Kings too. So not only did Philly draft two solid NHLers in the first round of this event, several major pieces of LA's cup winning core were also taken in this round. I told you this draft was good, didn't I? It's taken us a while to get here, but we finally reached the top 10 of the draft order. And if you thought the premier picks were full of busts, oh boy would you be mistaken. First up, we have the ninth overall pick by the Calgary Flames, Dion Phaneuf. A reliable top four defenseman and a former captain in the league, Dion Phaneuf played 14 years in the show, where he scored 137 goals and 494 points in 1,048 games. Though he never won any silverware during his NHL career, Phaneuf was a finalist for the 2006 Calder Trophy as Rookie of the Year, he wore a letter on his jersey for 11 of his 14 seasons, and he earned three trips to the NHL All-Star Game too, so he clearly left his mark and then some. Next we have the 8th overall pick by the Atlanta Thrashers, Braden Coburn. A steady depth defenseman throughout his career, Braden Coburn would spend parts of 16 seasons in the NHL, notching 49 goals and 234 points in 983 games for his efforts. While he wouldn't earn any individual accolades during his time in the show, Coburn would get his name on a championship as he lifted the 2020 Stanley Cup, which sounds like a pretty decent alternative if you ask me. Moving on to the seventh overall pick by the Nashville Predators, Ryan Suter. One of the most reliable blue liners of his era, Ryan Suter has played the last 18 years of his career in the NHL, where he has potted 100 goals and 643 points in 1,300 games at the time of this recording. Though he hasn't earned any notable awards in the show, the three-time All-Star and Norris Trophy finalist has led the entire league in average ice time on four separate occasions, so he has played his fair share of minutes during his long and successful career. Now we have the sixth overall pick by the San Jose Sharks, Milan Mikalik. A productive middle six forward for many seasons, Milan Mikalik spent parts of 13 years in the league, scoring 208 goals and 446 points in 747 games during that span. While he never got his hands on any awards, the 2012 All-Star produced a successful career in the show and he put up impressive numbers against the best players in the world for well over a decade. So if that's not a successful draft pick, I don't know what is. Next up, we have the fifth overall pick by the Buffalo Sabres, Thomas Vanek. A high scoring forward for much of his career, Thomas Vanek played 14 seasons in the NHL, where he potted 373 goals and 789 points in 1,029 games. Despite his lack of accolades during his tenure, the 2009 All-Star reached the 20 goal plateau in 11 of his 14 seasons, and he scored 50 points or more 9 times, so it's safe to say that his career went very, very well. Onto the third overall pick by the Florida Panthers, Nathan Horton. The textbook definition of a modern day power forward, Nathan Horton spent a decade of his career in the league, scoring 203 goals and 421 points in just 627 games during that span. Though his career would ultimately be cut short due to a back injury, and though he would never earn any individual awards, Horton would reach the 20 goal plateau in six consecutive seasons, and he would lift the 2011 Stanley Cup as a member of the Boston Bruins. So he certainly made the most of his limited time in the show. Penultimately, we have the second overall pick by the Carolina Hurricanes, Eric Stahl. 
one of the most productive players of his draft class and a longtime captain in the league, Eric Stahl has played 18 seasons in the NHL, where he has notched 441 goals and 1,034 points in 1,306 NHL games at the time of this recording. Not only that, Stuhl has also earned his fair share of silverware, as he has made six trips to the NHL All-Star Game. He was named the 2008 All-Star MVP, and he led Carolina to their first and only Stanley Cup back in 2006. Oh, and he's also a member of the Triple Gold Club too. Now that's how you live up to your draft ranking, folks. And finally, last but by no means least, we have the first overall pick by the Pittsburgh Penguins, Mark andre Fleury. One of the best netminders of his generation, Mark andre Fleury has spent nearly two decades in the NHL, where he has posted a 526, 303 and 88 record, a 2.57 career goals against average, and a .913 career save percentage in 952 games at the time of this recording. If all of that wasn't impressive enough though, Fleury has earned a plethora of awards during this span, as the four-time All-Star has won a Vesna Trophy as the best goaltender, a Jennings Trophy for the lowest goals against, three Stanley Cup championships, and has the third most wins of any goaltender in NHL history. Does that sound like a great first overall pick to you? Because it sure does to me, folks. Now it's worth mentioning that I've only highlighted the players that suited up in at least 500 games during their NHL careers, yet we still ended up discussing 22 different picks from this first round alone. In fact, of the 30 players taken in the first round of the 2003 NHL Draft, 15 of them played at least 750 games in the show, while 12 of them have played over 1,000 games at the time of this recording. Half of the players taken in the opening round spent at least a decade of their careers in the show, while a dozen players reached quadruple digit games during their careers. If that doesn't make this one of the best drafts in NHL history, I don't know what does. If the first round wasn't impressive enough for you though, there were also plenty of great hockey players that were taken in the later rounds too. For example, Louis Erickson, Patrice Bergeron, and Shea Weber were some of the many longtime NHLers taken in the second round. Brad Richardson, Nate Thompson, and Lee Stepniak were some of the most notable names from the middle rounds, while Joe Pavelski, Kyle Brodziak, and Dustin Bufflin were just a few of the diamonds that were taken in the later rounds too. In fact, of the 262 players taken between round 2 and 9 of the draft, 26 players suited up in at least 500 NHL games, 10 played at least 750 games, and 4 played over 1,000 games. Given that later round draft picks are long shots at best, and given that so many of these selections carved out lengthy stints in the league, this draft was very, very deep. So based on our findings in this video, I think we can all agree that the 2003 NHL Entry Draft was an overwhelming success. After all, not only were the top prospects able to live up to the hype, there was a sizable number of later round picks who also left their mark and then some. Because of this, there is a legitimate argument to be made that the 2003 draft was one of, if not the greatest draft in the history of the National Hockey League. I mean, look at all the players that are still in the league nearly two decades later. That's a pretty compelling argument if you ask me. Some selections didn't quite pan out, and plenty of players never made it to the show, but compared to other drafts across NHL history, 2003 might be the closest thing to perfect that we've ever seen. And on that note, I'm going to end today's video. That was a look at why the 2003 NHL Entry Draft was absolutely incredible. What do you guys think about this draft, or the players that were taken at the event? Do you think that it's the best draft in NHL history, or did your favourite team make some bad selections and miss out on all the fun? I know mine did as a Rangers fan, thanks Jessiman. Let me know in the comments below, I would love to hear what you guys think. But thank you very much for watching guys, I hope you have enjoyed. Please feel free to like, subscribe, share, or watch all of my other videos. Thank you very much for watching, and goodbye! A big thank you to Bexy93, Burned Retinas, Clayton Hallam, Drew Fawcett, Houston NG, Raquel, and Worthless Pieces for helping support this video via Patreon. If you too want to help support the channel a little bit further and get a shout out at the end of every future video, make sure you head over to patreon.com slash oddmanrush and become a patron today.